This part one of this lecture covers the reading uh, in the Clark and Merritt textbook, uh, chapter two. Part three will address the instructional complexity paper. An objective here is distinguishing between learning and instruction. Sometimes we think of these as essentially the same thing. I teach, you learn, it happens automatically. But an important part of our thinking is going to be to more carefully separate instructional attempts, changes in learning environments from what happens in the learner's head. Clark and Mayer's definition is good in this regard. It suggests that learning is a change in what the learner knows, and it's demonstrated by their behavior. The change is caused by the learner's experience, and this experience can be influenced by instruction. Herb Simon has a great quote, and it's here on our Carnegie Mellon campus in a little park place near one of our buildings, uh, Baker Hall. He said, learning results from what the student does and thinks, and only from what the student does and thinks. The teacher can advance learning only by influencing what the student does to learn. So we can't change students' knowledge directly. We have to foster an experience in our instructional designs that leads to effective learning. And one thing to reflect on is, can learning occur without instruction according to this definition? And can you think of some examples? Certainly there are many cases in which it can. So Clark and Mary's definition of instruction is a manipulation of the learner's experience to foster learning. Note, this is not limited to explaining or lectures or reading. Instruction is any kind of manipulation of the learner's experience to foster learning. It's something the instructional professional does, not necessarily just during class, but what they do in planning and creating materials, in designing homework assignments and projects, in fostering collaborative discussions. So all aspects of the learning environment, any kind of learning support that is provided to help change the learner's experience, that's what we call instruction. And the goal, of course, of this manipulation is to change what the learner knows. Now, one way to think about these definitions is to map them onto this diagram from the knowledge, learning, and instruction framework, which you will be reading about in the next module. But in this framework, this diagram makes a distinction between instruction and learning, and also between the outcome of learning, which is new knowledge, new components of knowledge, which might influence future learning but are revealed in assessments. This is behavior that we uh, track in some ways. And the overlapping circles suggest that certain kinds of manipulations in the learning environment might both aid instruction and help assessment. The ones up at the top here are things we can see. The others down here are things inside the student's mind. We can only infer them from what we see, and that's where data comes in and we'll talk a lot about using data and I recall the big picture how we can use data to make those inferences about what learning is actually happening and how is it changing the knowledge that students acquire so let's place the pieces of the clark and mayor definition of learning next to the relevant pieces in this knowledge learning and instruction framework or we call it the CLE framework so it's learning is a change in what the learner knows demonstrated by behavior. And again, if you want to engage in active learning yourself, try this yourself. Try to think about where these four pieces go. Learning is, that's learning events. A change in, that's that arrow that's suggesting that there's a change in what learners know. And the demonstrated by behavior shows up in these assessment events, in what students do uh, when they answer questions, when they do a step in an intelligent tutoring system, when they take up an exam, or when we're trying to see if there's changes in their knowledge components around their beliefs um, or motivations or dispositions. We can give a belief survey. Change is caused by the learner's experience. Oh, okay, where is that? Where's the learner's experience? That's what's happening as students interact with a learning environment of some kind. Okay, how about instruction? Instruction is a manipulation of the learner's experience to foster learning. Well, that's over here. The goal of the manipulation is to change what the learner knows. That's down here. So there's, in the definition of instruction, there's a jump here from what we do to the knowledge that's created. And this jump is sometimes what leads to confounding instruction and learning is the assumption that just because I do something, 
there will be a change. But in fact, there is a key step here that's skipped in this definition, which is fine for a definition, but I just want to make sure that we are aware that the CLE framework and, and the way we're going to think about elaborates that the learner must engage in some learning processes to change what they know. Uh, no matter how good the instruction is, if the learner doesn't engage, they won't get the desired changes in what they know. That'll show up in their later behavior.